I think all of us heard a bit about the events in Hawaii last Saturday. At 8 o'clock a.m. local time, the state's emergency management department sent out a warning that went to all the cell phones and TVs and radios that a ballistic missile was heading toward Hawaii. It was a false warning, they later learned. I think we've heard about it, but have we spent any time to think about it a little bit? Not just the obvious how an error of this magnitude could occur, <laughs> but to place ourselves maybe in the position of having seen that notice on our cell phone, on the TV. Remember, the correction wasn't sent out for over 30 minutes. <laughs> so for about a half an hour, tens of thousands of persons thought they might be in a position of immediate and severe peril. Maybe you saw some of the video footage of people frantically running, seeking shelter. Warnings are obviously meant to help us, but as that situation in Hawaii so dra dramatically demonstrated, the warning has to be credible and reliable. We have to know the source of the warning to, if it's even worthy of belief. Today's readings are all about warnings. <laughs> and as with all the teachings of the church, they come with the utmost credibility and reliability because the warnings flow from the Word of God. St. Paul writes in our second reading, I tell you, brothers and sisters, the time is running out. <laughs> Certainly that's what those people in Hawaii would have feared this past Saturday. But those words are not just meant for such a dramatic scenario. The words are meant to guide us always. Because the time is running out <laughs> for all of us. Our time here on earth is limited. And so we need to recognize that. In our gospel, Jesus says, repent and believe in the gospel. It's a warning. It's a stark and compelling words that require an immediacy of a response. Our first reading is the book of Jonah, and that's, again, it's all about warnings. The part that we don't hear about is, I think we all remember that story, Jonah is told to go to Nineveh, and he doesn't want to do it, so he goes in the opposite direction. He gets on a boat, there's a huge storm that comes up. The people on the boat find out that Jonah has disobeyed God's call. They throw him overboard. He's swallowed up by a large fish three days and three nights, and he prays to God for deliverance, and God delivers him. And that's where we pick up in our first reading. He now goes <laughs> to Nineveh, and he gives that warning. And we are told that the Ninevites believed God and proclaimed a fast, put on sackcloth. And so God repented of the evil that he had threatened to do to them. And so that same call that our Lord gives us and that the apostles hear in our gospel we need to respond. How in our daily living? I think one way is that we need to pray more. I think all of us need to. I think I, I need to. You know, last week we talked about the need to be silent in this world that is so full of noise, to listen to the Lord. Maybe there's a particular area in our life in which we are prone to sin or in a habit of sin. And we need to, the grace and the strength to turn away from that. Certainly that will be the focus in three and a half weeks when we begin the season of Lent, that season that calls us to this discipline, this fasting. In the gospel we hear that Peter and Andrew abandoned their nets and left their former way of life. That James and John left their father in the boat with the hired men. And all of them, in response to the Lord's call, followed him. So what will we do, hearing this warning and this call today? Let our response be in the spiritual life as dramatic as were many of the folks in Hawaii last Saturday. 
Let us see the immediacy of this call. Let us pray for the grace to respond more fully, to repent and to believe so as to be safe. <laughs> Not from that physical harm that those in Hawaii feared, but from the infinitely greater danger of sin and alienation from God so that we might live more fully each day in the power of his love and his peace.